Man, I love my coffee. Man, I love coffee, but it's not just the taste of coffee that I love. It's the process. It sort of slows me down in the morning. It stops me from racing around. I have to take my time and get the grind just how I like it and use the beans that I prefer most. Sometimes I go with a really strong bean just to kickstart my day. Sometimes not so much. And I have to work on the pour so that the pour comes out at just the right level of crema. I'm a bit of a sort of a, a coffee bigot, for lack of a better term. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone should like coffee. There's a mixture of us out there. Some love coffee, some are ambivalent, and some just downright hate it. And that led me on to thinking about some of the feedback that came to me outside of Open World about 18CXE. I'm super pumped about 18CXE, but some people just straight away were jumping into their blogs and their Twitter sphere and saying how they were very unimpressed and they just downright hated it. So I thought, armed with a coffee, I'll talk about some of the things that people said and why I think they're mistaken. Number one was, what's the catch? Why are you giving us free software? And admittedly, you could argue that Oracle has a reputation for not giving away free software. I would argue against that. We're active in open source, and obviously we've had 11G Express Edition out for two years and years and years. But those people that have an opinion that the only way we'd give away something for free is there's some sort of hook there, uh, are somewhat skeptical when it comes to 18CXE. My view is it's the, really the same as any other kind of offering that software companies do. For example, I do file sharing. In fact, I have an offsite copy of my files that I have for just about everything because I'm a DBA by, yeah, originally by trade, so I'm paranoid about data loss. So I have 10 terabytes of offsite storage that I pay a premium for. Some of my family members also use file sharing facilities and they pay a small amount each month for normally typically between 100 and 200 gigabytes of storage because they don't have the demands that I do. They're probably not as paranoid about data loss as I am because they probably haven't worked in IT, but they still want to copy things like videos and pictures and stuff offsite just in case they get lost. Most of my family members only do that because I've convinced them to over the years. And then there's my kids that also use file sharing, although they're not even aware of it. They use just a very small file sharing, the kind of stuff that comes for free that you get with Dropbox, OneDrive, and all those kind of providers. So I view 18CXE as very similar to those file sharing kind of options. If you had industrial enterprise requirements, in my case, 10 terabytes of offsite storage, then I'm gonna pay a premium for my product. If I have medium to small requirements, I'm gonna pay a smaller fee, but if I'm just a casual user or I'm using it just for occasional use, then I'll use file sharing as a free service. 18CXE, no different, except I think it's much more than something that you would use just for casual or just as a small free service. It is 100% free, but you can do some enterprise level stuff with it in my opinion. Now it's true, we do restrict the amount of space the database is allowed to consume and the workload it can do. You're limited to 12 gigabytes, a couple of CPUs, and a couple of gigabytes of RAM. That does not mean you can't run it on a huge machine. It's not the machine we limit, it's just the actual workload and storage that 18CXE will take advantage of. I've done a video before, in fact, I'll put a link in the description above, that shows you just how much work you can get out of 18CXE, even with those restrictions. So yes, it's restricted, but it's the same way that we have restrictions on storage when we use file sharing. For a free product, you have restrictions, but you can still achieve a hell of a lot of stuff with 18CXE. Number two is that it's some sort of ploy by us to get people to pay more for their existing database licenses. I take a bit of exception to that because one of the things that we did when 18C was first in its infancy, first in the planning stage, was we didn't want to build something that wasn't appealing to the consumer, to you guys out there. So we actually reached out on Twitter, Gerald Vensel put out a poll saying, what do you want to see in 18CXE? In fact, what were your priorities? In fact, you can see the results of the poll here. And that was, people wanted all the options available. The days of limiting the amount of download time because of poor internet, etc., are sort of things of the past. People were prepared to have a larger installation media so they could have access to all the features that would normally come with Enterprise Edition in a free product like 18CXE. So this wasn't our idea. 
This was actually requested by the community. We're trying to serve those needs. We actually put all the options in there such that you can explore them, utilize them, and more importantly, take advantage of them. In particular, the 12 gigabytes of storage limitation, well, throw in compression and you're gonna be able to store a lot more than just 12 gigabytes in 18CXE. Number three is that because there are no patches planned for 18CXE, it is useless for any kind of uh, serious database use. I think that's a little bit of a clouding of the truth in the sense that when you look at 11GXE, it was enormously successful for us. Huge numbers of downloads and uses in production environments. I think the concept of patching not being available or not being available as regularly as paid editions of the database isn't necessarily a limiting factor in terms of usage of Express Edition. And I also think there's a little bit of a looseness with the truth when people claim that production is, for lack of a better term, a Boolean that we have production databases and we have non-production databases and there is no sort of gray area in between. I agree that if you are having a mission critical public internet facing database, then I wouldn't use Express Edition simply because the regularity of security patches will be much, much more frequent for Enterprise Edition than it would be for XE, which would only get effectively the security patches that come with a new release of the database each year. However, there are heaps of production systems that aren't necessarily customer facing. Inside an enterprise, we often have numerous production systems that really serve departmental needs. Sometimes it's as simple as metadata management, other times it's for serious applications that never see the public. Things that help make the enterprise run and run smoothly. 18CXE is perhaps a perfect model for that because the cost is zero. You don't need to license extra copies of the Oracle database just to run these internal applications. And the reality is the patching and security needs are not as stringent as you would if you had a public or customer facing database. The other thing I'll say about security is don't get me wrong. At Oracle, it would be awesome if every customer was 100% up to date on security patches on every single database they had all the time. That would be perfect for us. You know, we wouldn't have to worry about security breaches that come in through some way, shape or form. But there's also a business reality. To do so is very challenging. It's one of the things that perhaps appeals about using cloud databases. You absolve that responsibility and you offload it to someone else being responsible for putting all those security patches on and testing them as soon as they're available. In our own enterprises, that's somewhat a tougher proposition. We have to often get the agreement of business representatives for those times when there might be an outage. We also have to make sure we've got people to do regression testing, should we uh, be applying patches, even though we expect security patches not to actually have any impact. All these things often create delays in the application of security patches, and yet we don't view that as a crisis. So 18CXE is really a special case of that where the security patches will come, they'll just come on an annual basis when they get rolled into the next version of 18CXE. The last one is perhaps a bit of a fair cop is that we originally said we would be pushing 18CXE out with all the features, Enterprise Edition plus all the options, and we didn't quite get there. In particular, people were very critical of us because we didn't put the tuning and diagnostic packs in there. That is an unfortunate reality of software development. Our intention was always to put in just about a complete version of the database, the most complete version you could ever think of straight into 18CXE. But we didn't quite manage it. We still have some logistic issues to work out in terms of getting those extra packs and extra options in there for you. It's our aim, I can't promise anything, but it's certainly our aim to get them there. Even so, without the tuning and diagnostic pack, I still think 18CXE is an amazing offering. You get partitioning, in memory, advanced compression, a whole heap of other normally extra cost options if you're going for a premium product such as Enterprise Edition. The ability for all those options still to be there in a 100% free product, I still think is pretty awesome. For me, it's back to the daily grind. I don't mean grinding coffee, I mean grinding through Ask Tom. But hopefully that explains better for you why I think 18CXE is still an absolutely game-changing proposition for your enterprise and it's 100% free. Have a good day, everyone.